Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 44. Do you recognize what this is? This is an antler from a deer. A deer buck would have two of these, one for each side of its head. Now, we're focusing on deer in this episode, a wild animal that's likely to be known by viewers. We're using English to describe an animal. That animal is a deer. Now, I used to tell students to describe an animal as if describing it to an alien. And I came to realize I was withholding a powerful tool, that of using a familiar animal as a starting point when possible. Now, thinking of farm animals, several possibilities emerge in describing a deer. A Jersey cow has those long, skinny legs compared to the body. Another candidate is a dog. Now, either one could be a beginning point as long as we're willing to then say how a deer is different from the familiar animal. Let's go ahead and use a dog as a starting point. We could write that a deer looks similar to a large dog, only it's larger than the largest dog. The legs are longer in comparison to the size of its core body. Looking at the tail, it's much shorter than the tail of most dogs. Now, as for the head, it's more narrow than the head of most dogs, and the snout is longer. The ears of a deer are much larger than those of a dog, and they're erect, never floppy. The pointed tips are usually straight up, but sometimes pulled back. A deer's eyes are oval in shape, and the neck is long between its head and main body. Now remember that we're trying to create a picture in the mind's eye of the listener or the reader. We could include and should include, as a matter of fact, color, the light to medium brown of a deer's coat on a mature doe. As for the buck, we should mention that it's larger and more muscular than a doe and that it has antlers. It's worth mentioning that the fawn has those white spots on its coat. Now, black-tailed deer, like the deer in the video clip, have short black tails with white underneath and at the tip. Some people think in terms of weight, height, and length, these should all go into a description, but not until the more visual aspects. Now, let's look at some of the connecting words we use in the description. We use the word similar to to make it clear uh, we went, did that to make it clear that the deer don't look exactly like a large dog, okay? Then we use the word only to indicate how it's different from a dog, only it's larger than a dog. We use the comparative form of long, longer, in the words in, in comparing, see a comparison to showing we're referring to the ratio between the leg length and the size of the torso, so we use longer. For the tail, we wrote much shorter than to show the difference from most dogs. We also had to use most because some dogs have very short tails. Now, for comparing the head that of that of most dogs, we also use the word, we use the words more narrow than for comparing. And again, we use the words for most dogs, since greyhounds, for example, have extremely narrow heads. Now, for the ears, we use the words much larger than, which is clearly the case, and an easy distinction to see. The oval eyes are obvious, as is the long neck connecting the head to the torso. Since we established a pattern using the word than, we can just write longer. We made repeated use of comparatives, adding ER to the descriptive word, the adjective. That forms the comparative. Now, notice the difference with the adjective narrow. It uses an alternative form for forming the comparative. The word more in front of it works better with some words, and narrow is a good example. So is pointed. So let's look at this video clip while reading the description and try to spot what we need to add to it so we have a more clear description of a black-tailed deer. So we're seeing the same clip we just saw. A black-tailed deer looks similar to a large dog, only it's larger than the largest dog. 
the legs are longer in comparison to the size of its core body. Looking at its tail, it's much shorter than the tail of most dogs. Now as for the head, it's more narrow than the head of most dogs and the snout is longer. The ears are much larger and they're erect, never floppy. The pointed tips are more pointed than most dogs. A deer's eyes are slightly oval in shape and the neck is longer between its head and main body. Now this is a rough description that can certainly be refined, but it's a good start. Now let's take a look at that while I read it again. So we're going to go back to this description and it says the black-tailed deer looks similar to a large dog, only it's larger than the largest dog. The legs are longer in comparison to the size of its core body. Looking at its tail, it's much shorter than the tail of most dogs. Now as for the head, it's more narrow than the head of most dogs and the snout is longer. The ears are much larger and they're erect, never floppy. The pointed tips are more pointed than most dogs. A deer's eyes are slightly oval in shape and the neck is longer between the head and main body. Now, I saw a few things in the video clip that could be added to the description. The front legs are shorter than the back legs. In describing animals, we have a special name for front and back. The front legs are called forelegs and the back, log, the back legs are called hind legs. So things that are near the head are called fore, that's F-O-R-E, not F-O-U-R, as in the number after three. Now things near the tail are called hind. The rump of an animal, the part near the tail, is called the hind quarters. Now another observation is that the back legs are slightly bent at the knees. Notice that we're no longer comparing the deer to dogs, we're just reporting what we see. Another feature is that a deer's feet are hooved, meaning they have that hard cloven feet that are actually a form of toenails. Now how about the color markings other than the tail? Did you see the dark shade on the ears or the black nose? How about the lighter colored belly? You see, you can put all these details into a description that will help the listener or reader picture what the animal looks like. Notice I did not include what any of these physical features do for the deer. We save that for a part of the report on adaptations. We'll take a look at another wild animal to describe as your homework. We'll do that right after this. Organization that's doing big time restoration of forests and stream banks. Hello, I'm John Letts. 